numbers just came out pretty amazing. Uh, are you continually surprised by the American consumer? Well, first of all, welcome to the New York Fed. We're celebrating the 100th anniversary of, of this building here on Liberty Street. Um, so, yeah, the consumer spending has been strong. I think it is driven by strong fundamentals. Job growth has been solid. We've seen real wage gains. We, we're in a pretty strong economy with good growth. So, yes, it's, it's part of that story. But, uh, you know, we I think what we're realizing is we're getting a nice uh, tailwind from the supply side of the economy. Good uh, labor force growth, strong Productivity, good real wage gains. So, with that, I think you know consumers are are spending. What's the thinking in your office and among your colleagues about does this last, or is this a surprise that you think could go away at any minute? Well, I, one thing that makes it really hard to forecast is we're still feeling the effects of the pan, the after effects of the pandemic and Russia's war in Ukraine and all the things that have happened in between. So, we're definitely still seeing an adjustment process by the consumer, by in the economy overall. Um, but you know. Overall, I think that the economy will continue to grow at a, a solid rate this year, probably not as high as the 3.1% we saw last year, but something like 2% or, or around that. So I feel like we're still in a, a good place, probably not as rapid a growth as we saw last year. Uh, speaking of international events, I have to ask you, uh, the Middle East going on right now, how do you think about the economic and policy uh, implications of these events. Right. So obviously we're watching this uh, very carefully. I think the primary way you see it through is uh, first of all through commodity prices, uh, but second is you know what we think of as a, a flight to safety, where investors, uh, when they see risks uh, in the global economy, they tend to bring money to, to the U.S. dollar, uh, and that tends to push yields down somewhat. Right now, I think you know markets are pretty pretty stable. We're not seeing big movements in that way, but generally that's the way I, I would uh, what I would expect to see when you see heightened geopolitical uh, tensions. When you think about uh, what the markets are reacting to and what could come out of this, is this more of an inflation worry or a growth concern? Well, I, I, it's really hard to say. It really depends on how uh, the situation evolves. Uh, right now, I don't think of this as maybe in the near term. Uh, it could be uh, effect of financial conditions and, and commodity prices, as I mentioned. I don't see this as a major driver of the overall uh, forecast for, or outlook for uh, economic growth or for inflation. Speaking of inflation, CPI came in much hotter than expected and uh, sort of freaked everybody out on Wall Street. And markets sort of took that as a turning point in Fed policy. Do you see it that way? I don't see it as a turning point. I think that, you know, we've, we saw inflation come down maybe quicker than we expected last year. We uh, definitely saw really uh, lower readings in inflation. In the, in the final six months, that I never thought that that was going to stay that low. Um, that it was kind of unusually low. We're now seeing some uh, unu a little bit unusually high readings. Uh, overall, I think the picture is 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 one of that the economy is getting in better balance. Uh, we still have a strong labor market, and we're seeing inflation gradually come down. Now, I do think that you know, the, you know for me, what do I see in the data? Well, the economy, and then you pointed out the you know retail sales today, but more broadly, the economy continues to be strong. Again, I think we're being helped by strong demand and supply, and those are uh, helping you know, growth. Um, and we're seeing you know, inflation come down a little bit uh, slower than expected. And so you know, I think markets are taking all that information into account and in how, they, how they expect policy to be. For me, I'm you know, data dependent as always. Really take the totality of the data and think about what it means for achieving our maximum employment and price stability goals. So I don't see this as a, a game changer or anything. I do think it's important information that will clearly, uh, you know, affect our, uh, th my thinking and, and my forecasts. Even those who've thought about what PCE might be after the PPI and CPI say inflation isn't coming down rapidly anymore, but you do have the strong growth, you have very low unemployment. Why cut rates if the economy is doing fine at this level? Well, first of all, I think monetary policy is working at the rates that we have now. So I think uh, I think monetary policy is in a good place. Over the past six, you know 12 to 18 months, we've seen all pretty much all the measures of imbalances in the labor market and our, and our economy recede. Many of them back to levels we saw in 2018 or 2019. So we're seeing the you know restoring balance in the economy. We are seeing a slow uh, decline in 
and inflation. So I do think monetary policy right now is in a in a good place. I'm not fixated on where do rates need to go, uh, you know, over the next year. What I'm focused on is what, how do we best achieve our, our maximum employment and price stability goals. The data we're seeing show that the economy is strong, and that's really good news, and labor market strong. At the same time, we are getting better balance, and we're seeing some decline overall in inflation. So for me, it's really about getting that right, and then whatever we need to do to adjust monetary policy, uh, we can do uh, to be, you know, best continue uh, the progress towards our goals. Um, so that's how I'm thinking about it, and that, uh, we'll just have to keep watching the data and make the decisions based on those goals. Well, is your base case that you will cut rates this year? My own view is I think that with inflation continuing to gradually come down, and I guess I would say gradually is the operative word here, um, and with the economy remaining strong, I do think that given where the level of rates are, uh, real interest rates now are, are, are considerably higher than they were before because inflation has come down quite a bit. Uh, so we will need to uh, start a process at some point to bring interest rates back to more normal levels. And my own view is that we will, you know, that process will likely start this year. Um, but again, it's going to be driven driven by the data um, and achieving our goals. So it's possible you don't do anything this year. Well, again, you're asking me to speculate on what sure. they, what will happen over the next eight months. <laughs> of course. Right? And you know, right now, I think monetary policy is in a good place. We're 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 seeing the progress. We're seeing progress. Uh, it's a bumpy uh, road on on the inflation front, and we'll just have to figure out how to best adjust policy uh, as needed to achieve our goals. Well, you mentioned the uh, real rate. Is policy tight now? I do think we have restrictive monetary policy. I do think policy is tight. So how do I, what do I look for? Because uh, the economy is growing. It grew over 3%. You know, we're adding uh, about, what, 275,000 jobs over the first three months. So that seems like an economy that's really strong and not being held back by monetary policy. But if you take a step back, all these measures of imbalances in the labor market, whether job openings or wage rates or quits rates or all the other indicators we look at, all of them are moving from being very tight to less tight and most of them back to more strong labor market or getting closer there. I mean, job openings are still high, wage growth is still a bit high, but these are all moving in the right direction. So I think the stance of monetary policy has really been an important driver of, re of restoring balance to the economy and helping bring inflation uh, to 2%. Towards two well, percent. What's left with inflation? Is it uh, something that you can affect, uh, or are these non-interest rate responsive sectors? You know, monetary policy can affect inflation in the economy. It, it works through multiple channels. So there are some sectors that maybe are not as interest sensitive, but the economy is interest rate sensitive. We've seen that over the past couple of years as we've, you know, moved from a accommodative policy to a restrictive policy. So monetary policy is working. I expect it to continue to work to, to bring inflation down. It, you're going to see it, uh, you know, show up in different parts of the inflation rates, you know, goods versus services and things. But over the past year, year and a half, Half, we have seen a broad-based decline in inflation in all these categories. It's just that we haven't gotten all the way to 2%, and we just need to keep uh, keep policy in the right place to achieve that 2% goal. question I always ask is, what are CEOs, companies telling you these days about their hiring plans, about what they're having yeah. to pay, and about inflation, whether they're raising prices or having to pay higher prices? Well, clearly, if you asked me this question a year or two ago, that's all they would be talking about, price increases, compensation compensation increases, the challenges of hiring uh, employees. Today, I think those, uh, you know, those comments are, are still out there a little bit, but far less than before. We're hearing from our contacts, uh, you know, that it's easier to fill positions than it used to be. Wage uh, compensation pressures are less and price pressures are, are less. I think that's consistent with what we're seeing overall in the data. You're the potential growth guy. Has potential growth moved up? You know, I am be getting more optimistic about potential uh, growth in the economy, I think, for a couple of reasons. One is, you know, through the pandemic and everything that happened after that, I, like most people, had concerns that the supply side of the economy had, had suffered, you know, damage, uh, the labor force and in, in terms of labor force and participation. And, 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 you know, as we've watched the data over the past few years, we've seen a, you know, increase in labor force participation, increase in labor force growth, and we've seen a rebound in productivity. Now, I'm not saying that we're in some, you know, a new high growth 
uh, uh, kind of a world. But I do think a potential growth is probably closer to 2% or a little higher, which is well above a lot of estimates of the past uh, few years. And that's a very positive sign for, for U.S. real incomes and for the economy and honestly for helping get uh, inflation down. A question for all of our friends uh, around us on trading desks. <laughs> you had a briefing on QT uh, at the last meeting from the Fed staff and members, according to the minutes, generally agreed that it should start soon. Does that mean May or does that mean June? Well, I think we said fairly soon. And, and uh, the, uh, you know, I think that the reasoning for uh, slowing the, the pace of reduction of our balance sheet uh, makes a lot of sense. It's a prudent uh, course of action. Uh, we are decreasing the balance sheet quite rapidly. And, and by slowing that, we'll have more ability to monitor, assess, and analyze as we get eventually to an ample reserves uh, kind of world that we're aiming for. Everything is going with the balance sheet. Uh, everything is going exactly as planned. Things are going well. When we decide to uh, you know, slow the pace of the balance sheet, that's a decision for the committee. No decision was made at the last meeting, but obviously we'll get together relatively soon and, and discuss this further. But to me, this is a sign of success of the plans we laid out almost two years ago to reduce the balance sheet. We've had very little disruption in, in markets. It's, it's worked uh, exactly as planned, and we're just executing on that plan, and that's going very smoothly. So QT could come before break moves. Yeah, these are really separate issues. I mean, on our, our shrinking the balance sheet, we're focused on getting to ample reserves. On monetary policy, we're very focused on achieving our maximum employment and price stability goals. Those are different objectives. Those instruments uh, can obviously move at different times in different ways.